about records, and that's just a quote. Um, they're cool to me because they've been around for so long. They started in the 1800s, and people still collect them, like, adamantly. I have a lot of them, and I know Noah has recently started getting into them, and a lot of us collect them, and they're really, it's like the cool thing to have now, but they've been around for so long, so that's why they're cool to me. So I'm gonna talk about the inventors, some of the changes, some like <coughs> technical junk, which won't actually be detailed, and then records today. Um, Thomas Edison didn't actually invent the record, but he did invent the first recording device. It was a little cylinder, and it was either coated in wax or foil, and sound waves, when they travel through the air, they would catch on a needle, and it would etch that wave into the cylinder. So when you played a needle back over it, it would play whatever sound back that you would record it. And his recorded vertically, so it was like a cylinder, like a Coke can on end, and it would record like that. And there were issues with that, because it didn't really, like, capture the sound waves right because sometimes the needle would fall because of gravity and it just wasn't as good as it could be so Edison kind of abandoned it until the next guy came along. Oh, and the first thing recorded was Mary Had a Little Lamb. Just the phrase, not the whole song or anything. Um, Emil Berliner was actually um, responsible for the flat discs that we know today. They weren't made out of vinyl then, they were actually a zinc disc and they were coated in acid proof resin. Uh, when the needle ran along the resin, it would scratch off the resin, and then you dipped the zinc into acid, and then you used that to make a mold. So with Emil Berliner's uh, discs, you could make multiple copies with the same mold. You just stamped it out onto, um, well, then it was like rubber and shellac and stuff, and then later it changed to vinyl because of um, both the world wars, because they we're running low on schlack. Oh, he also started <laughs> the Victor Talking Machine Company, which they made the Victrola. It turned like the record player, like you'd see it with like a hand crank into an actual machine, so you didn't have to crank it. The Victrola was actually a piece of furniture. Some of the housewives in like the 40s and 50s had complained that they didn't like the horn because it collected dust and they just didn't like the record player being out. So it was like actually a whole piece of furniture, it looked like a desk or a cabinet, and the record player was inside of it all hidden and sneaky, and you <coughs> open the doors, like we have one at my house in Indiana, you open the doors, it's louder, and you close them, and it's quieter. It's actually really cool. Um, changes. Cylinders to discs was the first one I talked about. Edison had his cylinders, and now they're discs, which, you know, records change to CDs, and now we don't even, like, who buys CDs anymore, even. Um, originally, it was hand crank, and then they made a way to like keep it cranking and then it was furniture and now they're mostly electric. Like I, I have like an old school one because I think it's cool, but I don't know. And then shellac to vinyl because of like war supplies and everything. Um, the materials, I already talked about what they're made out of. Right now it's just like a vinyl disc before it was like hard rubber coated in shellac and then Emil Berliner's was zinc and resin. But um, the speeds are actually kind of fun. Derek and I were talking about this the other day. Different records are recorded at different speeds, so they have to be played back at the same speed. And now when you buy a record, it's all like standardized, but there's a format war like there were with lots of other things for like what would be the right speed. But if you play back a record that's supposed to be at a certain speed faster, then it sounds like Alvin and the Chipmunks. And if you play it back slower, then it sounds like a monster. So you have to play it at the right speed or else, I don't know, There's creeps from Mordor popping out. Um, <laughs> today, um, today, a lot of people collect vinyl for the artwork that's on it. Like, I really like album art, and when you download it, yeah, you can get the little things in your iTunes, and even if you download it illegally, you can find the artwork, but it's not as cool as like having it in your hands and being able to turn the pages, and some of the things you can only get when you get the vinyl, and that's just really neat. But originally, it was just like a cardboard sleeve with like a hole cut in it, so you could see like, Victor Talking Machine Company or whatever company released it. It wasn't exciting at all, but I don't know. Now they're kind of elaborate and like really, really neat, and I like to look at them. Um, sound quality is another reason why people like them better today. It sounds warmer and richer. Like it's not necessarily better, but I, I mean, I think it's better. It's just a different sound. You feel like more connected to the music, I guess. It's fuller and it's not playing, it's not like a list of digitized numbers coming out of speakers, it's like the actual recorded sound, and that's neat. Um, also, records are really cool, so I took a segment from the Hipster Olympics, 
anyone seen that like whole YouTube video? Okay, well I live in Williamsburg now and it makes fun of my neighbors because <laughs> they're really cool, but this is like the segment on music, I guess. Oh no. But it goes on with the rest of the Olympics, <laughs> which is kind of funny to watch. Is YouTube hipster Olympics? If you want to watch the whole thing, it's kind of funny. But yeah, that's my presentation.